One of the things my students ask for a lot is a timer and you may think it's complicated but actually with this simple code you'll have no trouble having a timer and because it's nearly Christmas we're going to do two for one deal. You'll also get a countdown and you'll be able to make your own beautiful countdown like this. So let's get started. Right, so we're going to use Playgrounds for this. We can do this on the iPad or we can do this on the Mac. And we're going to start by creating a new app. And that's my app. This is what you get whenever you start my app. So it's blank. We're only going to be editing the content view here. So that's the bit we're going to do. I'm going to get rid of everything so that we can start again with a nice fresh start. And now we're going to start making our app. So the first thing we're going to do is put the content view in that's standard and then we're going to state uh, the variable time count uh, and we're going to start that with 0, 0.0 so it makes a nice double and then we're going to put uh, the var pause which we're going to start as false and this is the first important line this is the line that tells us that we're going to publish something every 0 0.01 second now that's enough to make a double digit timer this uses quite a lot of processing power because obviously it's every hundredth of a second so if you don't need that you might do 0 0.1 if you only need that one decimal place accuracy and it will reduce the amount of time you've got there so that line is required in every sense of the word So we're going to use a VStack for this because it's nice and simple and just puts one on top of the other. But the next important line for us to look at is the text line and we're going to use the time count variable there and we're going to add a specify and the percent dot two f is common to a lot of languages but that means you're going to put two places after decimal point. Very useful for making your variables display to the correct decimal place. So we're going to get a signal from the timer every 0 0.01 second and what we want to do now is we want to on receiving that timer firstly check to see if pause is false. If pause is false then we're going to increment that timer by 0 0.01 so this keeps everything nice and accurate and in time. Next we're going to create a button and it's going to be a pause button. And this is where one of the things I love about Switch happens is I can just use a simple toggle to go back and forth. Very powerful, very easy to use and we can use it all over Swift. And finally we add a reset button which literally puts the variable back to 0, 0.0. A nice easy way to finish off. Now let's have a look at doing a countdown and it isn't actually that much difference. Uh, it's one of those things where a lot of tutorials they do one or the other and you're left wondering well hang on how do I do the other one? So to make that absolutely clear I'm going to do that now and show you the differences. When you think about it afterwards yeah it's pretty obvious but until that happens it's not there. So we're still publishing every 0 0.01 second at the moment but actually for a countdown I only really need it to publish every second because I'm counting down a number here. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down to zero because again I don't need the decimal points displaying anymore. And then finally I am going to change this to minus equals one. Now this is going to provide us with a very basic countdown but if you haven't already figured that out you're going to find out that there's a little bit of an issue with it in the fact that it doesn't stop at zero. So if we don't want the zero what we going beyond into minus numbers then we're going to have to ask an and here and what we're going to do is just stop the time count when it gets to zero so if it's larger than zero it carries on otherwise it stops. The reset button uh, not ideal at zero is it when we put it to zero so I put a reset now of 10 and you can see it happily counts down to 10 but one of the lovely things about Swift UI is that 
we can uh, put a lot of interactivity into this. So let's actually add a slider. And you'll see that this is the perfect way to do a timer countdown. And so now you can see that we can count down and the slider even goes down as it goes along. So I think that's a really nice way to feature both of these things. I hope you've enjoyed the video and please I would love a sub and let me know what you'd like in the next video in the comments.